Hello, Zen Made Mastermind. I'm so excited to be here tonight. I have Sharon Cohen with me, and hopefully you can see her. We're getting uh, her screen pulled up right now. Is it? Are you good? <laughs> it says it is, but then it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> Hold on one second. I can see you. Oh, I just got out. I know you can see me. Hold on. Patience out here. Add it again real quick. Okay. All right, so I think we are good. If you guys could, oh, good, good, good. Lisa's here. She said she sees us. <laughs> or, good. Well, I'm so glad. Well, I know she sees me. I don't know if she sees you too. Lisa, do you see both of us? There is a 15 second delay. So whenever we talk, then they don't hear it for 15 seconds. So <laughs> well, you have appeared now. I don't see you anymore. Okay, hold on. Guys, this is my first night. Oh, good. Stephanie said that they can see us both. This is my first night te testing out some new tech on my end. So uh, give me just a second. I just want to make sure it's all working properly. All right, Sharon, can you are you back on? Yeah, you're back I on. can see me down in the corner, but I can't see you. Okay, hold on. Okay, you should okay, be able to. Be able to. Yeah. Turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, okay, I think, I think, I think we're good. I see you now. Yep, yeah, sounds looks good. Good. Okay, I think, I we, think are we are live, live and in color people. and in color people. Okay, so we okay, have. so we have. Sharon, Sharon and, and Sharon, Sharon Cowan, Cowan is, is an amazing, amazing woman. woman. She has been in the industry in the for industry 30, 30 years. years. She has done she some has incredible done some things incredible with things multiple, with companies. multiple companies. And now she's on the board, for, on the board for Cleaning for a Reason. And, and she's an awesome, she's consultant. awesome consultant. So I am just so super, am excited, super excited, excited to learn more about her, her and, and hear some, some great advice, advice and some and tips. tips. And hopefully she'll give you guys some, some good, ideas good ideas to implement in your business. Your business. So, let's so let's get started. started. Thank, Thank you so much, Sharon, for being here. And go ahead and tell us all how you came to this industry and a little bit about your Bio. Okay, that sounds good. You were doing a lot of echoing, so I only caught like every other word because it was fading in and out and echoing. So I think you asked if I'd just give a little background. Um, I came to the industry um, many years ago in, I was in search of a business to purchase or an industry. I had many years in the retail business. And, before I, I taught school right out of college and then stayed home and had kids and um, got back into the workforce mm. and was in the retail business for many years. And although I loved that and I learned a lot about business management in that um, business, it wasn't something I knew I wanted to stay in forever and I certainly didn't want to have a store. And in retrospect now, having a brick and mortar store is probably the worst thing in the world that you could have. So um, looking back, I'm really glad I made the business. So I looked for a service business. To, um, I interviewed owners of, of several that were for sale in my area. And uh, one of my goals was to flip as people do um, with real estate. Um, I wanted something that was distressed that I didn't have to pay a lot of money for because I knew I had the skill to turn it around and make it really something great and sell it for a profit. And so that's what I set my mind to do. Um, and I know I, I get questions all the time about maybe some someone interested in selling their business down the road. 
Um, I negotiated for almost eight months with the owners of my business because the number just was not where I wanted it to be. I didn't have to buy their business, so I was in a really good position to just walk away and um, tell them no, and then they would come back to me with a lower offer, and then I'd say no again. And so after, after about eight months, we negotiated, and I, and I bought the business. It was all residential at the time, and um, while that was good, where the business was located was in a very seasonal area of Florida, right on the East Coast. So when May came, all of the snowbirds, the winter people who were here, who were the customers all winter, they all left and went home. Now, I had done my due diligence and I saw the dip in the numbers in June, July, August, September. I knew the business would be slower, but I had no idea it would shrink to nothing. I mean, it literally, we had very few customers. So panic set in. And yeah, it, you know, yeah. Okay, I have people to keep employed. So I really turned to commercial work then, which was year round. And I found that very easy to, um, to manage and very easy to uh, get business. Um, it, it was just a very easy segment of the industry, in my opinion. I kept the uh, residential because that was cash flow. That was really good cash flow. And in the summertime, I, I had the daytime cleaners doing other things and, um, to keep them busy. But we had a full-time night staff. It just kept growing the commercial segment. Um, and eventually, when I sold it, uh, we were in four counties, and we had 140 employees, and we were about 80% um, commercial and 20% residential. So the res residential was still there, but it was the frosting on the cake to the business. The, the core of the business that provided the year round employment and the base for the business was commercial. So um, that's it. I sold it and I started, um, I did some freelance um, janitorial sales for a couple of companies. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I started, even when I owned the business, I'd been getting requests for help from other um, maid service owners and commercial cleaning business owners. So I just expanded on that and started working the consulting um, all the time. Um, and, and I love it. And I consult with both residential um, owners and commercial owners. I do a lot of work with residential owners who want to add commercial cleaning or construction cleaning, both of them. Um, I help with, and I do a lot of help with bidding and estimating. Some Sometimes a, an owner won't be a client of mine, but they'll come to me or I get referrals from other consultants who don't have experience in the commercial um, segment of the industry and they'll send me their clients to help with proposal or mm -hmm. um, you know estimate. so it's been great it's fun i love the business i could have left it after i sold the business that I mean that i did a nice flip with it I, it was worked out very well for me thankfully <laughs> and i could have just put my heels back and sat in a rocking chair but I really like the business. I really do. I think there's just so much opportunity and it can be, to me, the numbers are exciting. It, it's the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And um, when everything is running like a well-oiled machine, there is really nothing better than counting your money and taking it to the bank. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna keep on going until I, you know, fall over someday. Hopefully you go, girl. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, it's, a good it's there for the taking. So tell me, what do you think so, the biggest differences are in residential and commercial? Well, there are a lot of differences and um, the approach is very different. You know, one obviously is business to business. You're dealing with a business person when um, working in the commercial sector. Um, there isn't a lot of emotion involved. You're not having to be careful of Aunt Susie's antique desk that you know you can't have a cleaner ruin. It's 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 very different. Um, it's pretty much cut and dry. It's based on what the 
what the customer is asking you to do. And that's why online bidding for commercial just does not work because every job is custom. Every job is, is based on the time that it's gonna to take to do what that customer wants. Mm -hmm. Some customers want the moon, <laughs> most don't wanna pay for it. But, and then some customers just wanna, you know, blow off the dust and let's, you know, move on, get in and out and give me the lowest price possible. So everything is really customized to that customer. So to do an estimate online with a commercial property is, is you can't do it. No. You, you really can't. So, um, and it's the relationship too. It's all about relationships, both in residential and commercial. Um, in the commercial sector, you know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust, and that's for any sector of the industry. But in the commercial side, especially, you start core with that client the moment you put, set foot in their office space. And when you start walking through and asking questions and listening, listening to where their pain points are, um, you really start being able to solve their problems. And that's really what they're hiring you for. Solve their issues, just make it go away. 90% of the people who call you for a commercial estimate don't really want to be doing that. I mean, they, that's like a necessary evil. They just have to find a new janitorial company. Right. So if they can find somebody that will take that right off their plate and they never have to think about it again, they're going to select you every time. Right. So, um, you know, that's one of the differences. Mm -hmm. Pricing is, is another um, difference between the two. Um, I have found over the years that people coming from a residential training environment um, tend to overclean mm -hmm. and clean an office like a house. <laughs> and unfortunately, most of the time, they don't get paid to do that. So it's, it's always a danger to have daytime staff, residentially trained people cleaning an office space mm -hmm. because they will take way too long right. to do it. So that's a real flag and owners need to watch for that. Plus you burn them out if you're having them work in, in the day and at night. So whenever you go to hire for a commercial, what kind of qualities do you look for versus the ones you look for for residential? Well, um, for one thing, rarely are the nighttime cleaners ever in contact with the customer. Sometimes they are, so they can't be, you know, they can't really look like they've been sleeping in the streets. You know, they have to look presentable, but they don't necessarily have much contact with the customers. And the best applicants for nighttime work are people who have a daytime job and who only want a few hours few nights a week. You have a work history that you can um, check. Generally, they are they are wanting a part-time job for a specific reason. Maybe if it's, maybe it's a child in school, maybe it's a car payment, whatever it might be, they have a need to go there mm -hmm. and they want they want that money and that this is a second job for them. Um, those I found over the years work the best. Where that doesn't work is when you're doing larger accounts. Maybe it's a high rise. That's an eight hour a night job. You know, you can't have a full, someone who has a full time job come and now clean for eight hours at night. So it doesn't work in that environment. Most smaller janitorial companies are cleaning. In other words, they'll start at one building and they may clean three buildings in one evening, and they may do that three nights a week, mm -hmm. or they may two buildings. So. Getting someone to work a few nights a week part time usually works really well. They have a they have a drive to, right. to just show up. Right. So you have mainly commercial cleaning, uh, or you had mainly commercial cleaning towards the second half of your career, probably right. 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 Yes. Yes. Oh, always kept the residential. But I I will tell you from a personal standpoint. Mm -hmm. A, com a, a residential manager was the first person I hired, and I hired her within three months of my owning the business. Oh, wow. Because, and I was, fortunately, I was in a position to be able to, to not take a salary for the first year I had the business. Mm -hmm. Because my goal was 
to not be working in the business. Everybody knows that thing, mm -hmm. but work on the business. And I, there was no way I could handle that day, that morning chaos that we all know, that nonsense in the morning. I couldn't do it and go out and get new accounts and make certain that my invoicing was done on time and make, making certain that the company was being positioned to grow. Right. So my first thought was I have to get somebody in here to deal with the homeowners, the customers deal with the employees in the morning. Mm -hmm. so that, that was the first thing I did. That, I, my, my commercial accounts started rolling in. They just, they just started escalating and they moved, we moved along pretty quickly. So did you get a lot of commercial accounts just by, um, by networking and things like that? Or how did you approach, you know, the people that, you got them? In that, in that particular time, remember this was in the nineties. Mm -hmm. So things were very different. Um, <clears throat> networking was the main way that I got it. I joined the chamber of commerce mm -hmm. immediately. Um, and I, I became very active in that. If you join the chamber and you never go to anything or you don't get on committees, it's not going to, it's a waste of money. You have to go and you have to participate. So I got on the ambassador com committee, first of all. And that committee um, welcomed all the new businesses into town. Well, guess what? I was right there to <laughs> welcome them. When a new business comes into town, most one of the things they typically look for is a cleaning company. So um, that worked really well. And then I got on the Economic Development Committee, and I positioned myself at those committee meetings right next to the banking officials and all the heavy hitters, I call them, in town. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to know me and know my company. Um, then I uh, invited to be on the board of directors for the chamber, and I served in that position for two years. So by then, I was pretty well known in town, and we got all the business, all the good commercial business. Um, <laughs> it was, I mean, it's just the game you have to play. You just have to do yeah. it. You have to do it. If you sit back and wait for it to come to you, it isn't going to happen. So yeah. Get out there. So, what do you um, what do you recommend for people that are maybe a little bit socially awkward, or the ones that are just not used to putting themselves out there? I know I, I met a couple of those people in Dallas at CBF Live, and they were just like, "I can't network. I don't know how to socialize. I'm just I'm so shy." So, what do you what do you recommend to get over that? Well, you know, one of the the easiest ways to overcome that is to practice in the mirror. <laughs> And you know, people talk about your elevator speech and it's supposed to be 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. People really don't want to hear about you when they go to one of the business, to one of these kinds of functions. Um, they really want to know what you can do for them. And, and if you make the conversation or your initial greeting, oh, well, tell me about the business that you're in. Well, what do you do? Well, how long have you been in business? And how long have you been in town? When you make it about them, they will pretty quickly turn that around and start asking you questions about your uh, your business. I think it's always uncomfortable to attend one of these events by yourself. Mm -hmm. So if if you're on a committee, if you join a committee, I mean, going into a committee meeting of 10 people in the middle of an afternoon is a lot less intimidating than going to a social after hours or business after hours with a hundred people, you know, so it's much easier in the daytime to get your feet wet and join a committee. Mm -hmm. Now you make friends with some committee and say, I, gee, I don't really know anybody else, but this group. So I'm going to be going to that business after hours. Could I meet you outside somewhere? Could I meet you for coffee before? Um, could we meet at the door? get a buddy, find somebody, even if it's a friend, you take a, a personal friend with you the first time, um, you're going to have a lot more comfort in in going and knowing and meeting. And then after the first one is over, it gets easier. Yeah. I mean, it gets easier because you'll know a couple of people and you can make arrangements ahead to meet ahead outside and go in together. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest fear is walking into the room and you know no one. Yeah. And you know, what do I say? I have my business cards. I just go up and hand them my card. You know, I, you really don't. You, you <laughs> offer to take their card and here's my card and tell me about your business. Tell me how long you've been here. Tell me, tell me something about yourself. So if you put it on a them, it's a little less daunting than if you 
you Agreed. have to hear elevator speech. Agreed. Yeah, in the beginning, so, I was... Uh, try that. But practice in the mirror, what you would say. Practice with friends or family. Yeah. Ask them to be your guinea pig. And the more you practice what you might want to say, mm -hmm. the easier it's just going to roll right off your lips. It'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> People do it all the time. Yeah, in the beginning, I think I was, uh, I was just like that. Sharon, can you hear me? Did I lose you? I don't oh. have any sound. Okay, hold on. Can you hear me now? Hold on. I'm going to hang up and call you right back here. I need, sometimes that happens, guys. I, I think it gets tired. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can hear you now. All right. Hold on. Um, yeah, in the beginning, I was extremely nervous about going to those events. And I'm, I live in a town that I'm not from. So I know mm -hmm. absolutely no one, or I, you know, I knew absolutely no one whenever I started my business. So it was very daunting. And I kind of figured out that if I play the, not play, because it is me, but if I am the bubbly, bouncy little, you know, sp <laughs> crazy girl, <laughs> then it's very, it's very easy to talk to people. And um, now I sit down and I go, hi, I don't know who you are. What's your story? And then there's like, oh, well, that's very nice. <laughs> exactly. That's, you know, once you just do it once, you know, you're fine. And, and as I said, um, you get a buddy to go with you, get someone to go with you as a guest or um and if you're new to the chamber, um, they always will, they'll try to find you someone to go with. Just say, look, I'm, you know, I'd really like to go with somebody the first time I go to something. They'll be usually pretty accommodating about that. But joining the committees, that's where the real business is done. It's not necessarily done at the social, social uh, events, although some is. But it is, that's where it's done. Because that banker that I sat next to, mm -hmm. At that meeting, he remembered me, and about six months later, he called. And this is my now my second year in the business. And he said, "You know, I I think our uh, our janitorial contract is up soon. Would you be interested in uh, you know giving us a quote?" And I'm trying so to be so calm, and I'm ready to jump out of my skin, saying, <laughs> "Are you kidding me? Of course, I'll be there. Tell me where to be." So uh, you know, it's trying to be oh, really cool. Sure. I guess we can work that in. But we we went ahead and we went. It was the biggest account after two years. Um, it was, I think, 11 or 12 branches of the bank. And it was a quarter of a million dollar account annually. And, you know, we got it. And I, you know, whew, um, and we kept And the man that purchased my business from me still has it. So wow. that account is. 1996 and there are now 45 or 47 branches all over southeast florida so it's been a very lucrative account so that chamber meeting really paid off that committee <laughs> and people for are me. out there <laughs> complaining about the hundred dollars a year <laughs> to join if you don't work it it's not going to work for you right if you don't get in there and do it don't waste your money now were you a part of bni as well I went to one or two BNI meetings, and they just didn't. They just didn't do it for me. I just I didn't like the commitment that I had to be there, or somebody had to fill it for me, and there was homework to do. Like I had to come up with these referrals and all this, and so I that didn't last long for me. I got more traction from the chamber. Gotcha. Well, don't scare me. I just joined. <laughs> and I think it works for a lot of people. A lot of yeah. people get are very successful, and I wouldn't I wouldn't poo poo it for the world. It's just for me. It's just yeah. It wasn't well. I think it has to do with the kind of group that you fall into. The one that I found is mainly contractors, which uh, yeah. brings me to my next point uh, of subject here. You are very um, versed in post construction cleaning, aren't you? Yes, I love that too. So, I would say that was my favorite kind of cleaning. So yeah, tell us about that for those of us that are trying to get into it, or like for me who I've done a couple, but I feel like I'm about to get a lot of requests for that because my B and I group is all construction guys, <laughs> so I have no idea what to expect. You, you have to go in as the powerful mighty might. I mean, you have to be the one in control. 
because quite frankly, contractors will jerk you around every which way, upside down, they will blame you for everything. Every scratch anywhere will be your fault. Mm -hmm. So that game is defense the whole, the whole time. And um, offensively, you have to be strong and, and know what the expectations are. I do have an ebook that I would, and I can tell you about this after the call, but I will give a special offer for anyone that is in Zenmater that listens to the call, a special pricing on it. It's a downloadable ebook that takes you step by step through the whole process of construction cleaning. Awesome. Yeah, I'd like to read that. What the, uh, yeah. <clears throat> One of the biggest tips I can give people, well, there are several, but one of them is on the walkthrough. When you walk through the property, you're, what one of the things you're looking for are scratched windows and nicks out of woodwork, um, gouges, damages to surfaces that are already there. At that point, when you see those, it's important to, to, to take a picture of them with your camera, with your phone, I'm sorry, I take a picture and even point it out to the superintendent if there, or the project manager. Mm -hmm. If that project manager is walking with you, then you'll wanna say, I see the scratches here. I see the gouge here. I see this here. And But take a picture so that you've got a, a time and date stamp mm -hmm. on it so everyone, right, so he knows. Uh, she knows. The other thing is often the, the contractors will always want you in way too early. Most of the time they're behind schedule. Mm -hmm. So the owner of that building or home, whatever it is, is really putting the pressure on, let's get this done, let's get this done. When they see the cleaning people on the property, they know they're close. So contract the, the job super generally will bring you in way before he's ready for you. And that's really to take some pressure off of him because now we're going to get this done. My uh, advice is when they tell you um, we're going to start at Monday, we're ready for you Monday. On Friday or the day before you're supposed to start it, to visit the property and look for yourself. Don't just assume they're going to have everybody out of there because they're not. Mm -hmm. You might be able to work around one electrician or one plumber, but you can't work around 12 other people, other tradespeople in there doing things. So when you get there on a Monday and you're supposed to start Tuesday and there's 15 people still working in there and there's still wet paint, that's when you say to the superintendent, you know, you're really not ready for me. And uh, it's going to save you a lot of money if we only have to come out here once and do it. Mm -hmm. But if I have to come back every time I come back, there's an upcharge for that. Your price was based on one time here, or if you've set it up so you're doing a rough clean and a final, it's based on two visits. Mm -hmm. Every time I have to come back another time, it's more money for you. So let's do us both a favor and save both of us money. I'll come back in two days, let me see where you are, and if you're ready for me, then I'll come back the third day. But you have to take control of it. You can't let them say to you, I have to hear, have you here Tuesday. You have to be the one to decide if they are ready. And if they insist, then say, that's great. But there's going to be an extra charge for me to come because I'm going to have to come back to clean up after these guys. So you want to make all of those things clear up front um, about your trips there. Also, whenever you're going back, when you've cleaned an area, you should have a checkoff sheet. And there's a sample in my ebook, a checklist that the superintendent signs off on. Mm -hmm. Okay, that room's done, master bedroom's done, this is done, this is done, this is done. Once it's done, you if they bring in an electrician and you have to go back in, there's an upcharge for that. Mm -hmm. Your job is to clean it once, done. Mm -hmm. Now, you, in your contract, usually you'll have to come back and do a touch-up clean, but that's part of the price you're charging. Mm -hmm. You have to do two and three uh, touch-up cleans the only one losing money on that deal is you. Mm -hmm. So you really have to have to be firm, fair, but firm and say, this is it. I'm going to look at this property before I, before I send four people out here and waste my time and money because construction cleaning is never something that you can schedule and you know, it's going to happen. You schedule it 
and then they could change. He could call you the night before and say, we're not ready. We've had a problem. So you don't have people sitting on a bench waiting mm -hmm. to get this phone to go do the cleaning. So you have to stay ahead of that game. You have to check in with them a week before, then go visit the property before and make sure that they're going to be ready for you on the day that they say they are. Um, so that brings me so, to the question. So you know, that you don't avoid, you don't pay extra. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah, so if you go out there and they said, we're ready for you Monday, and you show up and there's still people in the home doing construction, do you charge them right then and there for that visit, or do you just reschedule? How do you handle that? Well, you usually re you'll have to reschedule it because if they can't, and if they haven't had the courtesy to um, let you know ahead of time that they're not ready for you, like even a 6 a.m. phone call that says don't count. Okay? If they haven't done that, they need to get a char get charged. But again, that's all up front in your contract. Okay. That's all spelled out. Mm -hmm. so there's no surprises. There shouldn't be any surprises on any anybody's uh, side with this. So they need you need to spell out all that payment another thing you really want to be careful of is um, the the payment process sometimes contractors will say we'll pay your invoice as soon as we get paid from our customer mm -hmm. that's no -go. <laughs> that's absolute no go you don't even go there You're not doing that it's not your a problem truthfully when they get you just know what schedule you're on um, we'll ask for a 50% deposit to start on the date that, that's paid before you begin cleaning. If you can make that work and your contractor will go with that, definitely do it mm -hmm. because now labor is covered. All right? right. So the labor for the job. Is covered. The other terms, if the, the customer is absolutely, no, we don't give a deposit. Um, you want to make sure before you put the first rag on a surface, of when you're going to get paid and you can you can uh, invoice them at the completion of the job but you want to know how many days before they pay is it 30 days is it 45 what is your payment schedule and get that built into your contract so that there aren't again there aren't any surprises on either side um, and then the other one of the other real risks that companies aren't aware of is following manufacturers recommended cleaning procedures for all the surfaces in the house mm -hmm. uh, one of the the newest uh, trends in residential homes is the um, lvt it's called the luxury vinyl tile and it looks like the wood planks but it's vinyl um, that's very popular that has very specific cleaning instructions you can't just put any old thing on it mm -hmm. so what you're what you're used to using in residential or commercial settings may not be what's recommended for the first clean for these surfaces. So you want to ask the um, superintendent where the manuals are. If they can't, they can at least tell you the manufacturers and you can look up um, recommended cleaning um, products and methods online. What happens when you don't do that is you negate the warranty. So when the homeowner or the business takes over that property, you've already ruined the warranty for them if you've done something different than what the manufacturer recommends. So that can be a very, very serious, costly lesson and issue yeah. um, for you. You should be sure you know who the manufacturers are, the flooring, countertops, cabinets, and what their recommenda recommended recommendations for first time cleanings are. And again, you can get those online if the superintendent can't provide them, but there should be manuals on everything. That is yeah, a uh, fantastic, you know, fantastic tip, Sharon. I appreciate that. And I'm sure a lot of them out there listening do, which we do have quite a few people here and um, they've got some questions. Uh, the first one I saw was Lisa Chow said that post construction is her favorite as well. And it's been her experience that it's hard to see yep. scratches when things are taped or tarped. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> yes. Um, but again, you can <laughs> pull some of the tape off and look, but you can make a disclaimer in your contract 
that should you find anything built from you prior to the inspection, uh, the pre-clean inspection that you will be, you know, that you'll absolve um, responsibility for that. It, it won't be on you. Gotcha. Um, and then that, somebody else asked if you paid hourly or, or uh, by the square foot. By the cents per square foot? You do. No, that, but that's the question, hourly or cents per square foot yes. flat rate for the job? Yes. Okay. Um, many companies, both in commercial cleaning and in construction cleaning, get trapped in the cents per square foot um, estimating. The difficulty with that is if that's the only number that you've worked up and you get the number from somewhere, and let me just while I'm on here trying to plug for consultants who tear on the things they see in the groups about pricing. Um, you know, it's it can be very dangerous if you don't do your homework and know your own numbers. Um, but beyond that, um, when you quote only cents per square foot, mm -hmm. somewhere in that price, you have to have an idea of how much time it's going to take. So if you quote only, oh, you know, it's a thousand square feet and I'm going to do 15 cents a square foot. If you only use that number and you haven't backtracked and figured out how long are my people going to be there? Am I going to make any money at that price? Mm -hmm. Then you're really doing yourself a service. So you always, because in this industry, time to do the job is directly related to the cost, the fee you charge. They have, they go together. So, um, Coming up with the square footage price is fine. You know that if that's what that number is. But now go back and look and say, how many hours am I going to put into this? How fast do my people clean a construction site? How long is it going to take? And what's my labor cost? Sometimes when you figure out cents per square foot only, you haven't even covered your labor cost, let alone anything else, and you don't know that. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a budget of time to give the people to go to the job. They're just going to walk in there and take hundreds of hours, you know, that if there's no control and, and no idea how much time, but I'm getting 20 cents a square foot. Well, good, but your labor is costing you 25. So there you go. You, you have to, you have to know what your cost is and you can always figure it out by cents per square foot to just see where you are. But I would never rely on just cents per square foot. Never gotcha. without knowing what my cost is. Great tip. Um, Cindy Whitaker asks if you do windows with your cleans or do you have someone else do those? Oh, you cut out. I, oh. I couldn't hear all that. Uh, Cindy Whitaker asked if you do windows with your cleans or if you have somebody else do that. Um, you really typically should do them. If you're going to do a, any amount of construction cleaning, um, then you know it's important that you do the windows in the beginning you can sub those out um and i had someone in the beginning that i used as a subcontractor mm -hmm. and uh i don't know what happened to my screen here it's like oh you're, you're not going to be able to see me you'll just have to listen <laughs> oh, that's fine that's fine um so i had a subcontractor and he would I had a great relationship with him. He would buy some windows in the beginning, and I recommend that you partner with someone um, to do that uh, with you in the beginning. Um, he would drive by the property, and he would give me um, a price on what he would charge. Then I would build that in and add some on myself um, to my customer. He would actually even wear my company shirts on the job so that the people you know, they didn't know that I was subcontracting it out, which he was, he was a good, he had a good reputation, had all the licenses and everything. So that was not a problem. Um, then after we started doing more and more construction cleaning, I had my own crews to do the, the windows. Um, the really high ones, we only, we would go up to the second story, but anything above second story, I called my contractor guy because he had a bucket truck and he could, he could get up there and, and get them all. But subbing it out in the beginning is really the way to go because they're faster. They know what they're doing. Then after a while, he gave me a flat rate. He said $5 a side or $5 both sides on windows of such and such size. He gave me a size breakdown. So I told her about 
Yeah, that's awesome. I'm assuming that you probably met him at your Chamber of Commerce uh, meetings. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was. So That's awesome. And actually, a funny story, the guy went into commercial cleaning as well as windows. And after I sold my business, um, several years later, the man who bought my business bought out that window guy. He was ready to retire. He didn't want to do it anymore. So he bought his company. Wow, now it's all right. one anyway. <laughs> that's crazy. So I yeah. saw on your little bio that you were in four countries. Tell us a little about that. I you cut out again. Oh, I, I couldn't hear you. I saw on your bio that, that you I was were in, in four countries. Four counties, not countries. Oh, counties. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, wow. Not <laughs> no. We weren't global. We were just regional. Four <laughs> counties. Okay. Just we were kidding. <laughs> yeah, counties. Counties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had multiple yeah. locations then? Yes, yes. I had two. I started just two offices. But I started the second office, and this was kind of fun. Um, started the second office when I got the big bank account because their flagship main branch was two counties over. Mm -hmm. So that was like. 30, 40 miles from there. So I rented a uh, storage unit that had, um, it was an air conditioned storage unit mm -hmm. and it had electricity, luckily. And we had supplies in there and the supervisor for that area met there every night at five o'clock and she was there to receive the employees coming in. They bring in their dirty rags or empty bottles. She'd fill them up, give them new supplies and send them off for the night. And, um, it worked out great. It was cheap. It was 50 bucks a month. And I did that for two years until then we had more accounts in that regional area. So then we, uh, we had a real office after that, that, you know, had supplies in it and, and it was, it was good. But the little story was great for a couple of years. It worked out just fine because I didn't need it to be manned all day. You know, there was nothing going on in the day. It was only for the nighttime. Right. So it was good. Yeah, so for those of you that are okay. wondering if it's time for you to get an office, maybe just look into a storage unit if you're worried about the expense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great. It, it was it worked out really well for us for a long time. So tell us, so. Sharon, tell us a little bit about your growth strategies and what got you to where you are. Well, you know, I, I think it, it's a matter of defining what you want for yourself, first of all, where you want to see your business, what reason you are in business, what's the reason you want? Is this something you want to retire from? Do you want to sell it for a profit? Do you want to keep up? So you have to figure out what it is you want, and then you focus everything around it. Once I knew when I bought it, so I didn't have to decide that it was going to be a flip, and um, then it was, it was easy because the faster money for me in my market was in the commercial sector. I could have far fewer customers and get far greater revenue from fewer people. Mm -hmm. So I had to deal with fewer people. So that was my strategy there to pursue that market and yet never give up my residential because the cash, you, you, you know, I'd be a fool to give that up. Plus, I already had that. And my wintertime base was wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was a great business. So I, did, I didn't give that up. Um, but the networking, being known in the community is one of the, the biggest, um, almost non-cost um, methods that you can use to grow your business. When people thought of a cleaning business in the heyday, when I was right in the thick of it for those years, um, they only thought of me. I had a weekly ad. Back then, dating myself, we advertised in the news and in the yellow pages. That's mm -hmm. what you did because we didn't have anything else. So my picture was in the uh, paper every week. Mm -hmm. My picture was in, I was one of the first in the area to do display ads in the yellow pages with my picture. So. Anywhere, and then with the Chamber of Commerce, um, I was involved in 
virtually every activity I could be. Anything at the mall that went on, I was there. Any any kind of outdoor trade shows or any kind of fairs, I was there. Contributed to, and I'm a huge fan of doing this, contributing to Little League sports. Mm -hmm. um, with my company name plastered across the front, the back of these kids' shirts. Parents love nothing better than to see a business that supports their kids. Okay, it was great marketing. It cost me $200 a season, so big deal. The high school, I took an ad out in the yearbook every year. I sponsored um, the football toss. During football games, they'd throw out 500 little footballs into the stands with my company name on them. I sponsored those. So every discussion for marketing was to make yourself the player, the one to go to in town that nobody thinks of anybody else when they thought of cleaning other than my company because I was all over the place. And a lot of it was not expensive. And, yeah. and I didn't, I think we get, we get comfortable in having people come to us mm -hmm. and having outside come to us for business rather than us going out mm -hmm. to, to get business. And it's, it's, it's in dynamics and the way business is done, but I think it makes it much more difficult because the competition is all sitting behind their desks with the owner, with a lot of people today, sitting there waiting for all of this inbound um, communication. Yeah. The people who are outside the box are going to get up from behind their desk and get their butts in their car and go out and do something. Just go out, be seen, uh, have meetings with people, drop in. If you have commercial accounts for the owner to drop in from time to time is priceless. I mean, that that is that take gets you farther above Miss Waste Baskets and no toilet paper on the toilet in the bathrooms. That takes that'll take care of that. that. I mean, people will, will be much more forgiving when they know you, yeah. but we don't, do today. you know, we don't do that today. And so many times I see on, on some of the groups and, and I, you know, I, I have to say, I don't, I don't um, comment on the groups a lot because, you know, I have a lot of clients who are in the groups and truthfully, it's not fair for them and me to work with them on a custom basis and then to give away the same thing I would be telling them uh, on these groups. So so I, I don't I don't do a lot of it once in a while. But mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, I see so many times people say, well, you know, this customer complained and especially a commercial customer, maybe not so much a residential unless it's really serious, like something's been stolen or broken. And I see them say, well, I'm going to send them an email or I'm going to text them and and tell them we're really sorry or we'll, we'll get it next time. Mm -hmm. And I, I just shake my head and I say, get up out of your chair and go visit this customer, <laughs> you know, and and granted, you can't do that all the time. You can't. And if it's a tiny customer and it's, you know, if it's a, a decent sized customer and you want to get more business from them. You owe it to the customer to go see them. Go see what the problem is. Or send a supervisor. Send a live human being that's going to make face-to-face -face contact and say, I know you're upset. I'm really sorry. We're here to take care of it. I want to take a look at it. I'm here. Um, we, just, we just don't do that enough. And people's, people are letting digital communication get in the way of building relationships with customers. Right. And it, at the end Hey, it's all going to come back to relationships. You're right, and I think it'll go full circle. I think there's probably a lot of owners out there that maybe are getting bigger, and they don't have the time to go do you know these in home or these in business and office personal things. But they also don't even think about maybe they should train their office manager to do that. Then you know, and it just stops. somebody should. It just stops. Or take a look at how they're spending their time all day. Mm -hmm. And got a priority, and how, where, what can I give up? That's menial, men, uh, that's a menial task that someone else can do, mm -hmm. that I can do the important things like coming face to face with an important client mm -hmm. or a customer. Um, and it's not going to be every day, and you're not going to be able to do it with all the customers. 
Um, one of the things that we do in commercial cleaning is doing at least monthly audits and inspections. Mm -hmm. And when you do those, it's important that even if your customer says, you just go on and you know, walk by yourself, I, I don't need you to. I always insisted, and I always did it, that I went by that person's office, and if I did nothing more, then wave at them from the door. They knew I was there. Mm -hmm. They saw it wasn't a text, it wasn't an email, it was me coming to look at their property mm -hmm. or my supervisors when I got those. I mean, that really goes a long way in in making your business grow. And I guess that would be my over overriding strategy is to not let, um, not take away totally the personal interaction because this is a this is a people business. Mm -hmm. This is a personal business, especially the residential, more so than the commercial. Right. Because you're you're in people's homes. You're in their personal stuff. You know, you're they need to know somebody cares. And it and it's not always digitally. You know, it, it, sometimes it's a face. You just see the person. So that's my soap absolutely soapbox. right, Sharon. I think that unfortunately that's fading as the years go by, but hopefully we'll have a resurgence. <laughs> and, and and it doesn't need to be a hundred percent resurgence like it used to be. Right. It needs to be so often. It needs to be selective. Mm -hmm. Um you know, if, if like in construction cleaning, if you're cleaning um, one time, your first time in, and it's a subdivision, and it's going to be a two-year build-out because it's they're doing 300 homes, mm -hmm. I'd have my butt there. Yeah, I'd, you better believe it. The they were there, and I'd have it there the second day. I'd be there the whole time, mm -hmm. not necessarily cleaning, but checking in, mm -hmm. letting the superintendent see me, mm -hmm. and and no, that's one. It's a one-time, small little something you're going to do. Then no, that's, I mean, you have to weigh it out carefully because you can't be everywhere. Right. So you choose the ones, but it is okay to get out behind your computer screen and go see people. That's okay. Yeah. And I, I just feel we're, we too often just dismiss that as something you can't do when you really can. Amen. So tell us a little bit about how you came to the Board of Cleaning for a Reason and what you do with them. Um, well, right now, um, the board is dissolved. The, the original board, um, the, since ISSA took over, um, the board is not active because it's part of our ISSA. Um, Debbie and I, Debbie Sardone and I were friends way a long time ago when we both first started out in the business. In fact, she cleaned my sister who lives in Dallas. She cleaned my sister's house. Oh, wow. And I know that's going back a long time. And um, Debbie, I don't, Debbie wasn't the one cleaning, but she sent her people and stopped by my sister because my sister was a new client, met my sister and said, and my sister said, oh, my sister just bought a cleaning business in Florida. I should get you two together. So the next time I visited my sister, she had Debbie over and we had lunch and met and we just became friends. And that was back before email. So we did phone calling. You know, we actually talked on the phone to each other. Wow. And and so she when she started the foundation, she or the charity, she asked me to if I would be on the board. And so I was. And I was on it the whole time uh, until ISSA uh, bought it. And it's or not bought it, took it under their wing. And uh, I so we, story. I didn't know that. <laughs> I go back a long time. Awesome. We did a couple of workshops together in mm -hmm. 2009. Actually, we did um, two workshops together. Awesome. I think everybody knows her mother just recently yes. passed away. We're all very sad about that. That was a what? She was a wonderful lady. Yeah, I got to meet her in Dallas, and she was a Spitfire yeah. man. She, she was, <laughs> yeah, really a cool lady. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, um, so tell us a little bit about what you offer in your program. Okay. Um, I I offer um, more customized coaching than many of the other consultants. I don't have um, canned programs, so to speak, where you buy it and these are the steps, and you take one and do this, and then do this, and then do this. You know, is. 99% customized to my um, my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we 
spend some time doing reviews of their business and what they have in terms of goals for themselves, where they want to go with it. And then I work up a plan and a, you know, and a process that we then go go by. I work with a lot of uh, several of my clients have me working with their office manager or their general manager mm -hmm. um, for management skills training. A lot of them don't have that. They typically came from the field mm -hmm. and and do really well with cleaning and running the staff. But as far as management skills, they're sometimes lacking. So we work on that delegation teaching people how to delegate, time management, um, those kinds of things. So, you know, my, my, uh, my expertise is in turning around businesses that are troubled and in helping businesses develop additional sources of revenue, um, a diversification of the business by adding a commercial account out or taking on construction thing of um, one-time um, bid propo proposals mm -hmm. with people who are re residential people that want to get into jobs. I sometimes talk them off the ledge too when they, they have four employees and they want to take on a 300,000 square foot college campus <laughs> because somebody, would you like to bid on this? And so then they call me and we, we walk them slowly back and say, no, no, not going to do it. So, um, so, it's not really so that, that, yeah, yeah. So. Well, that is fantastic. And how can people get a hold of you or do you have a website that has your information yeah. on it? The, yeah. Cleaning business consulting group dot com. It's a long name. And I know I have a lot of people in the business who like my personal Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, Sharon L. Allen. And that's fine. I, that's perfectly fine. But I do have a business page. It's Cleaning Business Consulting Group. And then it's, if you just type that in, it'll take you to me. And, you know, there are a lot of tips um, on that, a lot of general management, some leadership um, tips and things um, that are applicable to any, any business, but primarily anybody in the service um, industry. I, I did a series for a while. And I and I really need to get back at it called Fix It Friday Theo series that would come out every Friday and it was a short video and I would present a problem that I had been asked about during the week and then what the solution might be. So I'll be doing those again uh, really soon. They're just short, you know, one and a half minutes or so of, of the, yeah. the problem. And so they were really good. And I'm putting together some online learning um, now, some courses um for general management and leadership some time management again i'm big on that and um uh, financials um you know financial intelligence is the thing that gets people in trouble generally in the business but not knowing the numbers not knowing what the numbers should look like or how to how to fix them when there's a red flag what is a red flag right. yeah. No, so you know I do a lot of help with that, but I'll have some online courses um, addressing that specifically for the cleaning industry coming up. Awesome. So are you going to be a YouTube celebrity too? Oh sure, <laughs> I already am. You know that guy just up. I don't even know what's on there, but he he puts those those videos on there. So there's. Well, that's great. A, a cleaning coach for our next generation, right? <laughs> That's it. Whatever you need. Awesome. Uh, well, if you guys have any more questions, go ahead and pop them in now. Um, so besides the uh, the stuff that you just mentioned, what else is uh, coming up for you? Anything exciting, maybe personally? Are you going on any trips or anything? Um, no, not really. Don't have anything. Don't have anything. I've got a smooth sailing um, spring coming up. Probably a trip to Michigan in J uh, June. That's where I'm from. Yeah. And I'm trying to put together... Uh, maybe a half a day or one day seminar with um, several clients up there. So we will probably use one of their facilities and put something together for a day. Nice. But as closer, I'll, I'll do that. Um, Are you going to be going to ARCSI in October? Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 I usually speak for ISSA. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, I haven't spoken for ARCSI yet. Um, 
Well, last year I was supposed to actually, now that I mentioned it, and we had Hurricane Irma here, so I didn't oh, right. make it to Vegas. I had to cancel out on that. But Gotcha. Well, this year is on Halloween, so I'm curious to see how many. That's I weird. Know. I know, it's on Halloween, so I'm like, I don't know how many moms are not going to be there because they have kids, you know? Right, yeah, right. I have no idea, but right. we shall see, but... um. But gosh, thank you so much for coming on here, Sharon. This has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. You are so knowledgeable, and I think everybody is just going to love listening to this on the replay. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on, and you make it very easy because you handle all the hard stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the techie stuff that doesn't work in the beginning, but then it all works out. So, <laughs> But guys, yeah. make sure to check out cleaningbusinessconsultantgroup.com and find out more about Sharon and what she offers. And... Um, Thanks so much for joining us and sharing. You have a great rest of your night. Thank you. You too. If anyone has questions, just grab, get hold of me. All right, fantastic. See you later, Bye. guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.